point where I would like to take some questions. If anyone has any questions, oh, good, 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 ma'am. Um, well, so far, um, the three of you have um, touched on, you know, the the, um, the drama and your 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 various acting backgrounds. And I'm just curious as to, like, I wonder if you could just talk a bit, little bit more about the just the dramatic experience of working. Um, in England or in Britain, meaning, um, because the, it seems that, it just seems to me, and that's my personal opinion, that, that the level of acting, like that you, if you take horror, um, the Hammer horror films, for example, it's just that the level of acting is so, I'm trying to find the right word, superior, as opposed to you look at a lot of horror films from perhaps other countries or the US, um, around that same time period, and even even today, um, how was Hammer able to get the top-notch actors in into these films? And just and, and you know, like for you guys, all have you know sound very literary, you have posh accents, and everything. You look at a lot of um, <laughs> the low bid budget type horror movies around the world, and you just don't find that anywhere. And I mean, do you live and breathe acting and just drama and I, I think the answer to this is William Shakespeare, actually, because we in England, Britain, are fortunate to have had William Shakespeare, who is the greatest dramatist of all time, and we are able to perform in his plays, which are very demanding and require a very high degree, high level of acting. So we get a lot of experience at it. Um, I think you've got wonderful playwrights here, of course, I mean, fantastic playwrights, but I do think that American actors are brilliant film actors, you see. I think they're m b marvelous film actors, and I don't think we English quite can aspire to that level. I think we might knock them for six on the stage, but I think Americans beat us at film, um, because they make some, some superb films. But we have had the opportunity to perform the greatest playwright that's ever been, amongst many other playwrights as well. I think that might, that would be my answer to your question. Maybe with the exception of Kevin Spacey, who does pretty well on the stage. <laughs> Maybe that, yes, I should say something. Um, I agree uh, with Kate. I, uh, uh, there's a kind of naturalness that you see in a, a lot of American film acting, which uh, is uh, a trick, isn't it? do as little as possible to get the thing about this, the, the camera and the big screen is that every tiny mo movement, every flutter of the eyelid, a twitch of, of the cheek muscle is, is eloquent, it means something, you have yeah. to be very, very good at conveying thought mm. without overdoing it and I think uh, perhaps we tend to, I think this is where Hammer is enjoyable because it's allowed us to uh, go a little bit further, perhaps. Um, a lot of modern horror films seem to rely a lot on um, what's it called? CGI, yeah. mm. uh, on, on the effects, on, on the sort of uh, uh, the strange, wonderful you know, prosthetics and so on and so forth. Of course, with Hammer, it was all what you see is what you get. It had, yeah. it had to happen there. Um, at the end of Twins of Evil, uh, you see Karnstein decomposing, but that took all day to shoot you know, a little bit at a time. You know, back to makeup, change it, make it worse, <laughs> put it back in position with nails to sort of uh, to, to mark the spot, um, and a little just that last sequence to which took a whole day to shoot for that reason. Whereas today, of course, you just do it on a computer. Uh, I'm, I'm digressing now, but uh, to, yes, uh, back to the question. Um, I, uh, you know, Marlon Brando, and you know, uh, we can we can list dozens of brilliant American actors. So, uh, uh, I, you know, it's a good point, but I think the thing about Hammer is it's a, it's a very special genre, and it has its own particular appeal. There are other wonderful. British films, of course. Um, it's very odd. I, I, uh, 
some of you may know that I, I, I uh, had a fantastic opportunity at a certain stage in my career to, to work, uh, to be directed by Roman Polanski and to work alongside Walter Matthau, whom I revered. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that was Pirates? Pirates. And the film, as you know, was a gigantic, enormous turkey flop, <coughs> which you bombed, partly because it was enormously expensive, and that, that, uh, that kind of makes it worse, <laughs> because people are very sensitive about losing them so much <laughs> mo money. Uh, and I went through a sort of terrible crisis when I went to see the, 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 the English premiere of um, Pirates. It was in a cinema in Chelsea. Can't remember. And I took along several members of my family and we, we kind of went into this empty cinema. About ten people in there. <laughs> really. So by the time I came out, I thought that's the end of my career. Uh, the film is a disaster because it's me, it's my fault. All that English overacting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I blame myself. And I think it had actually it affected me very badly. In fact, uh, it, 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 it uh, affected me at a, at a level of confidence which I hadn't expected. And I had no further contact with Roman Polanski, and that was the end of it. So. Uh, I went to see it again recently. It was screened at the BFI in, uh, on the South Bank. And to my amazement, and I don't know if anyone is familiar with the film, but you may or may not agree with me, but I, I realized it wasn't me at all. Actually, <laughs> actually I, I'm not so awful in it. I'm not saying I'm brilliant, but I'm not so awful. I turn in a nice, uh, you know, sort of work a day. You know, respectable performance, but the weakness of the film is Walter Matthau, would you believe? <laughs> he does he does it in a cockney, which is so laboured and so slow and so kind of relished, you know, with lots of letterbox of the mouth. <laughs> but uh, it drags the film to a pace which you don't expect in a pirate movie. It becomes a bit of a day. And I thought, wow, why didn't I realise it at the time? I didn't. So that's, in a way, trying to answer your question, is it? Uh, it kind of works both ways, doesn't it? You, can, you, if you're lucky mm. to have a sensitive director, really nurtures you and looks after you. Uh, I can't say that was true about Roman. He didn't have the time. It was such an enormous production. There were so many things to, to be taken care of in, with every shot. He didn't have the time to look after you. In fact, there were all these great stars. You know, there was. In, in the production team, the, the lighting cameraman and so on, and, and uh, at, the, at the end of a long, hot day of standing around in costume, he'd be there saying, when can I put my actors in front of the camera? And there'd be three minutes left of the day to shoot before they had to pack in. <laughs> that sort of thing was happening yeah. a lot, isn't it? it happens a, lot. a lot of hanging around. Clark Cable said, I need a good pair of shoes or something, I think, <laughs> to be an actor comfortable because you're yeah. going to be standing around an awful lot. Something else you, you, you asked actually about our accents, you know, that they're very posh. Posh. <laughs> what you what you gotta realize what you gotta realise is this kind of generation that we are. Um, you know, making films in the fifties and the sixties and so on. And that was how pretty much how you spoke. I mean if you Yes, you may have taken on, I took on a, ch a child part as a, a, a Scots boy, so okay, I did a Scots accent, I did a Cockney part, and so on. But essentially, your training was actually, if you like, BBC or Oxford or Queen's English. So that is our generation. If you come through the more recent generations, of course, you have all the regional languages are actually now much more fashionable. You know, we're out of fashion now in yeah. terms of our accents. Um, so that's that's part of your question as well, because of, we're from that generation. But the but the level of voice acting is still there, even with the people that are speaking with the regional accents today. This is true. It's fashionable, but when they want to take on um, a Scotsman, or they're in, in, even if they're not, and they're from the south of England, they want to play a Welshman, they can do it. And if they want to play an American, you can't even detect the accent. <coughs> like you said with Walter Matthau, he was really labored. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's that's a very good uh, point you brought up, and uh, it's something that's never really addressed or even mentioned, and it's true. You you come from a specific time period, um, and theatrical background, and yes, today, uh, actors from England, yes, it's all changed you know, because of the lack of a better word, uh, melange of cultures that are also there now, in more Indian and, 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 and it's just everything has changed. So, not, you know, Manchester doesn't even sound like Manchester, the accent anymore, that's changed. And, uh, a northern accent doesn't sound like it did back in 65, 66, it sounds completely different. I think that's television has done that. It's kind of flattened yeah. out a lot of accents, a lot yeah. of regional accents. Mm -hmm. But I think the perception uh, to your question is that uh, would you agree that we, we tend to, pers to sort of notice that, that American movie stars particularly are paid to, to do the same thing every time. They're not paid to be something different. Uh, that would make the producers nervous. And I think that's something which we're, we are more fortunate as English uh, based actors, that we, we can do a lot of things. I, I spent my entire career, because I didn't look English, playing foreigners. I, I played Greeks, Frenchmen, Italians, <coughs> no, anything but, but a, a quintessential Englishman. And I remember trying to get an agent in, fr in France, and she said, if you look like Peter O'Toole, blonde, blue eyes, we, we can use you. But because you look like a Frenchman, what's the point? You know? <laughs> Um, does it? Yes, sir. Uh, Kate, sorry to uh, bring this down a little bit from how elevated it has been, but um, in The Vampire Lovers, um, on the new Blu-ray, Madeline Smith said she was not very aware of the lesbian context of the film. How aware of it were you? Darling Madeline Smith is an innocent. And she wouldn't have been aware of it. I was very aware of it and resisted it, I have to say, because in those days, 1970, you know, it was, I don't know, there was something a bit prurient about it. I thought, this is unnecessary. This is, um, you know, this is not part of uh, what um, Dracula and, you know, Bram Stoker and all those people were about. They, were, they wouldn't, wouldn't go, go there. Um, so I have to say, I resisted it and resolutely refused to do nude scenes and all the rest of it. But, um, but that's because I was trying to protect my own career. But Madeline, bless her heart, wide-eyed innocent girl, lovely girl. But those big, big eyes absolutely reflect her inner soul. They do. Another question? Sir. Yeah. Uh, I think this is for Kate. Um, the late, the late Ralph Bates, who only did a few Hammer films, um, you were with him in Horror, Frank, Horror Frankenstein. What was he like off set? Um, Ralph was an absolute darling. I liked him enormously. I enjoyed working with him tremendously. I had known him before. And, um, <coughs> he was a very gentle man. It was a tragedy that he died at 50, but he was a gentle, sweet, Lovely, lovely man, and um, it, I would love to have worked with him again, but in fact, Martine Bezik got the part that they had thought I might play, which was his opposite number in um, Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde, but Martine, of course, looked far more like him than I ever did, and so she got the part. Um, and I was nearly in something called Twins of Evil, but um, no, Ralph was a honey. He was a real honey, actually, um, gentleman, and um, you know, miss him a lot, really, miss him a lot. Yeah, time for one final question. Um, make it a going. Um, a few conventions back, Veronica Carlson mentioned that you know when we, as you said, when we were making these movies, we thought of them simply as a movie we're making. They're going to have a small shelf life, probably never to be spoken to again. For each of you, at what point did you realize, especially with the, the hammer um, connection, <coughs> hey, there's something going on here. Suddenly people are asking me about these movies from 30 years ago. But in my case, it was Ingrid Pitt. 
who uh, uh, I met as a I finally did, uh, about four years ago, I decided to um, <coughs> go to a convention. I never even knew it existed. I had no idea there were memorabilia things going on in the world. I, none of it. I, I, I just didn't know it happened. I didn't know this, this sort of thing went on. And I met her there, and she was delightful. She, oh, wasn't she? She, she was and very, uh, she wasn't very well, but she was, she was battling on bravely. And she said, you should be doing these things, you know, it's, uh, you know, go out there, meet your fans, meet people who'd like to meet you. Well, so this is the second one I've, I've ever been involved in. Um, the last one was at the NEC in last year, same time last year. So you, were you, you were there? Yeah, we were. Yeah, you, were there. you were next to me. I was, <laughs> yes, you were. You were my neighbour. <laughs> Well, I, I, I would say, uh, I would say, I started getting a lot of fan mail after the village of the Dan, and I think that's when I probably, you know, when I was 10, 11, when it was released, and I think that's the first inkling that I got that, oh, wow, well, you know, I'd be getting fan mail from Canada, from America, from South Africa, and, you know, people I'd never met or anything, and I, that was the first inkling that I got that, oh, people seem to really like this movie. But to be honest, I mean, I was only a child. To be honest, I was just doing a job, you know. My mum would just said, go work, you're old enough, earn some money, you know. <laughs> and, then, um, and I, to be honest, I wasn't even thinking of, like, what went on. Once I'd made a movie, I was gone, I was on to the next one. And I was making film after film after film. I made ten films in three years as a child. Um, so I, I wasn't even thinking of the end result or of my career or anything else. Maybe I had the luxury of knowing I was getting out so it could all collapse later and it wouldn't matter. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure what I was answering. Um, I, um, but um, I, I would like to say that I made um, a big movie um, break from Peter O'Toole um, with in, in a, an amazing movie called Great Catherine, which, which was an adaptation of a play by Bernard Shaw, and in it was a wonderful American actor called Zero Mostel, who was just absolutely great, a sort of equivalent of your Walter Matthau. And he overacted wildly in the film, but he was brilliant. The film was a total flop, and I had a huge break, but it got me a lot of work. Jean Moreau, the great French actress, was in it. It, it was a wonderful break to have at the age of 26, and it, it got me into other movies, but um, it didn't do what I thought it was going to do like you. <coughs> and I've, I've worked with Roman Polanski as well and, and knew him, and uh, it's, it's extraordinary. The, the turns, the twists and turns one's, one's career takes. But um, I had no idea, I had heard about these conventions from when I was out filming Dynasty in Hollywood. All these <coughs> British actors and actresses kept turning up and said, oh, we've, we've come over to do a convention. And I said, what's that? And they'd all come over. I've been invited over especially because of whatever TV series they were in at the time, which was very highly popular. This is the first time I've been to one in the States, and um, it has been so far a very enjoyable experience. And I think it's wonderful that all you people are so so keen on what you've seen that you you take the trouble to come and and meet everyone. It's 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 been it's been a most edifying experience. I thank you for it. It's lovely. <coughs> on that note, uh, we have to conclude this. I want to thank everybody for coming. I especially want to thank our guests.